Betelgeuse is so big that if you were to place it in our own solar system, it would stretch to the orbit of Jupiter. It's so easy to think of our sun as this incredibly gigantic thing, but our sun is absolutely tiny compared to some of the giant stars in the sky. A big, giant, dramatic end to a star's life. Is Betelgeuse about to blow up? No bomb or pyrotechnic could match the immense force of nature's largest explosion, the supernova. As much as we love to blow stuff up here on Earth, therefore, the recent unusual pulsating of Betelgeuse has sparked speculation that it may be warning that the star is poised to explode and become a supernova. What would happen to life on Earth if this star exploded in its dying moments? How far are we thought to be safe from a supernova? Could we survive the explosion's fatal effects? Let's find out. The last time a supernova appeared within our Milky Way galaxy was in 1604, or at the very least, the last one known to have been seen. It's possible that there have been further nearby supernovas since then, although they were probably hidden by atmospheric gas and dust. The Crab Nebula, whose light first reached Earth in 1054, is one of the remnants of supernovas that occurred in the past. The supernova, observed in 1987 in the Large Magellanic Cloud, a tiny partner galaxy of the Milky Way, and given the designation 1987A was the supernova that came in second place to Kepler's supernova in recent years. Other galaxies have also had a large number of supernova explosions, which are visible via telescopes but would have gone completely unnoticed by observers in Kepler's time. To put it another way, it has been a while since we last witnessed a star explosion in our galaxy. Are bright, close supernovae therefore due? The nearest red supergiant star to Earth that is preparing for an explosion is Betelgeuse. Betelgeuse has been known to mankind for ages, but in recent years, as its impending destruction has become more obvious, its star power has increased. Betelgeuse is predicted to go supernova as its life cycle is about to end, according to scientists. Many years ago, Henry Neely, a lecturer at the Hayden Planetarium in New York, tried to characterize Betelgeuse and remarked that it is like an old man with his strength almost entirely spent panting in the asthmatic decrepitude of old age. In the center of stars, hydrogen and helium are fused to create energy. A star's energy output considerably increases as its cores fill with enough helium, at which point it expands into a red giant or supergiant like Betelgeuse. To counteract their relentless pressure of gravity, such stars' cores create heavier elements one at a time. The production of elements heavier than iron, however, consumes rather than provides energy so a star's days are numbered once the cores start producing iron. The star's core eventually collapses due to the star's immense weight, which results in a catastrophic supernova explosion. Betelgeuse started dimming substantially in late 2019, which caused excitement all around the world. Some people thought the major event was about to happen because of the peculiar Betelgeuse dimming. But Betelgeuse has not yet erupted. Since then, this prominent star in Orion, the Hunter's constellation, has recovered brightness, dimmed, brightened and appears to be now transitioning back to a less active condition. Nonetheless, it is obvious that more dimming could occur at any time. Why did it suddenly dim? Astronomers have determined, after examining data from NASA's Hubble Space Telescope and a number of other observatories, that the bright red supergiant star Betelgeuse physically blew its top in 2019. Betelgeuse produced a massive surface mass ejection SME, and lost a significant portion of its visible surface. This is a behavior in a star that has never before been observed. Regularly, our sun releases chunks of its flimsy outer atmosphere, the corona, in a phenomenon known as coronal mass ejection CME. But the Betelgeuse SME ejected 400 billion times more mass than an average CME. So it appears that a cloud of hot gas that the star released and temporarily covered some of the star's light was what produced the odd dimming of Betelgeuse. A dust cloud is being formed by four orange star panels that are releasing incandescent gas and cooling. Betelgeuse could be just 640 light years away from Earth, although some estimates place it farther away. Determining distances to red supergiant stars such as Betelgeuse is a vexing problem in astronomy. Despite being far away, Betelgeuse is one of the brightest stars in the sky due to its inherent brilliance. It is around 100,000 times brighter than the sun. Such brilliance has a cost because Betelgeuse's immense energy soon depletes its fuel, hastening the end of its existence. The star will eventually run out of fuel, collapse under its own weight, and then explode spectacularly as a supernova. Betelgeuse will then become extremely bright for a few weeks or months, maybe matching the brightness of the full moon and becoming visible in the daytime. 
what would happen if Betelgeuse finally popped? What would we see and feel from Earth? Will the supernova destroy the Earth? The three brightest supernovae ever seen appeared in our skies in the years 1006, 1054 and 1572. Each of these stars was either as brilliant as Venus at its brightest or was on par with it. They were all, however, thousands of light years apart. Betelgeuse, however, is just 640 light years distant. This means that if the star were to suddenly explode, it would become extremely bright, maybe even approaching the brightness of the full moon and produce distinct shadows. Even through the brightness of the daytime sky, it would be easily apparent. In the following years, where we once saw Betelgeuse, we might only see a diffuse patch of faint light. That would be the intensely hot, newly revealed core of the star, surrounded by an expanding cloud of gaseous debris. It would initially appear at this dazzling brightness for two or three months. Then over the course of the following two or three years, it would gradually fade from view. If there were no further impacts on our planet, that would be the extent of the explosion overall. Betelgeuse is lucky to be where it is in relation to us and not closer than, say, Capella, a very bright yellowish star that crosses high overhead in the middle of the evening. The distance is only 43 light years. Do you know what would happen if Betelgeuse were located that near to us? It would get brighter until it was only 8,000 times less bright than the sun and 50 times brighter than the moon. The Earth would be exposed to electromagnetic ray bursts that would batter the planet with radiation and quickly destroy the ozone layer, notwithstanding the fact that the radiation level and ozone layer would soon revert to normal. Okay, but are there any nearby supernovae that could harm us? In the Milky Way, supernovae typically occur once every 50 years. Thankfully, within 50 light years of Earth, there aren't any stars powerful enough to explode in a supernova. But there is one binary star that is 159 light years from Earth and may pose a threat to mankind. Supernovae of type 1 are binary star systems. The matter is drawn from one star into another, usually a white dwarf, in a turbulent dance between the two stars. The white dwarf eventually bursts, creating a spectacular supernova. Type 2 supernovae, on the other hand, happen when a star runs out of fuel and some of its mass enters its core. The core will begin to expand and become heavier over time until it is unable to withstand the gravitational force acting upon it. Then, kaboom, a supernova is created as the core disintegrates. These explosions release a tremendous radiation blast that travels through space and kills anything within 50 light years of them. Our solar system is only a little more than two light years across, to put this in perspective. So the blast from the supernova would be 25 times farther away than our solar systems. Even if a supernova was only 30 light years distant, mankind would face more serious issues than a pandemic. A tremendous flood of high energy neutrinos would be carried by the powerful radiation blast, which would cause any living thing to boil from the inside out. Hope you like poached meals. If the supernova came close enough, the entire Earth may be annihilated in a fraction of a second. The shockwave's arrival would be powerful enough to completely destroy our atmosphere and even our oceans. After the explosion, the star would continue to get brighter for almost three weeks, throwing shadows even during the day. Even if life survived, UV and gamma radiation from the supernova's superheated gas would be lethal. The ozone layer would be destroyed by these rays, causing nitrous oxide smog to develop. The most effective shield against the radiation would be Earth itself, even though the initial dose of gamma rays would harm humans. Almost all of the cosmic rays, X-rays, gamma rays, and ultraviolet rays would be absorbed by the rock. To escape the deadly radiation and noxious atmosphere, we would all have to go far below ground and accept our new lives as mole people. Sadly, there would be a rise in lethal tumors and mutations. The majority of people would survive if they all moved underground for a few years, but this option would obviously only be available to a small number of people because there isn't enough space or infrastructure underground for so many billions of people to live there for an extended period of time. A close supernova would cause a cataclysmic radiation burst. Over the course of several weeks, the explosion would release ultraviolet, X and gamma rays, which wouldn't necessarily reach the ground but would still cause havoc on the Earth's ozone layer. Therefore, it wouldn't transform us into the Hulk, but it would remove the stratosphere's ozone layer. Oceanic phytoplankton might be wiped out if the ozone layer were to disappear, since the Earth would otherwise be covered in dangerous ultraviolet radiation from the sun. And to top it all off, our phytoplankton would disappear, which was responsible for over 50% of the Earth's total photosynthetic output. We need phytoplankton because it can remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. We would have a harder time breathing without it. Without our influence, global warming would increase considerably more. Yet because phytoplankton is a crucial component of the marine food chain, its absence would lead to the extinction of many aquatic animals, and gradually, so would humanity. As a result, practically everything dies, like countless what-ifs. Nonetheless, a few lucky species of extremophiles might still be able to withstand the high radiation. 
The supernova would leave behind a spectacular nebula after a few hundreds of thousands of years. We would at the very least enjoy a stunning view of the night sky. For those of us who can see, that is. It's possible that such a thing has happened at some point in the history of our planet. A mass extinction at the end of the Devonian period, about 360 million years ago, has undoubtedly been the subject of scientific debate. Scientists point out that rocks from that time contain plant spores that appear sunburned, as though blasted by ultraviolet radiation. But supernovas aren't just a destroyer, they also create. Many of the heavy elements we rely on, such as the oxygen we breathe, calcium in our bones, and iron in our blood, were created in nuclear reactions that took place deep inside exploding stars and spread throughout the space as a result of the blast waves they generated, according to astronomers and physicists. The local bubble where Earth is located is a pretty safe area of space, so don't panic. Our Milky Way's galaxy peanut-shaped region of expanding gas is the product of nearby supernova explosions that took place 20 million years ago. These explosions brought gas, dust, and heavier elements like uranium and gold to Earth, which in turn helped build our solar system. We wouldn't have strong nuclear reactors or brilliant gold jewelry without these supernovae. So you can literally count your blessings. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click on the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.